Hi, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about 2020 books. I'm going to do a little bit of a check-in so far with all of the books that I've read that either have or will be published in 2020. Keep in mind this list is growing, it is changing, it is evolving as the year progresses. So something I think I should say right away, all of these books I'm talking about today are books that were sent to me as a free copy in exchange for an honest review on Goodreads or my blog or Bookstagram. Once I finish that, my obligations to the company are done and anything else is something that I do extra because I want to share these amazing books with you all. And I will not be giving any major spoilers for these books, especially considering several of them have not come out yet. However, I do have to give a little bit of a background for why they made the list so I will do that but I won't be giving away anything past like the I think like a first quarter or so of the book unless the ending really changed my opinion in which case I'll outline in like the vaguest of ways why my opinion changed on the book because of the ending so without further ado let's get started on the best books of 2020 so far is how quickly she disappears. So this one was sent to me from Berkeley. It's gonna be, it was already published on January 14th. So this one is set in the Alaskan wilderness. Around 20 years ago, Elizabeth's twin sister, Jacqueline, disappeared. And ever since then, Elizabeth has been a little bit, I guess the word, she was just affected by it. It's just like there are joys in her life, but they aren't as big as they were because she's constantly thinking about her lost sister. In the meantime, uh, in this small town, Elizabeth has married a school teacher. She has a child. I enjoyed it, but not as much as it could I could have, because this one had like so much potential. The Alaskan wilderness is just like very well done. Like the setting, uh, it really does take you into a different place, and like that was really, really what got me interested into this book. However, there are just some things that just didn't seem very consistent character-wise, and that kind of had me pulling away. So one of the things that is something that, to be aware of when you're reading advanced reader's copies is that you're reading a book that's not in its final stages. It's not all done yet. So I kind of keeping that in mind, my opinions are based on a slightly earlier copy of the book. There have been a couple of them that I have gone back and reread, and for the most part, it seems to be pretty much the same book, just like a little bit of rephrasing here and there, but the core of the story is the same. So for this one, I really enjoyed this one's atmosphere, but for the actual story, I did find it falling a little bit short. The Sound of Stars. So the next one is a young adult book and sometimes I get a little bit of flack for still reading young adult when I should have passed that young adult phase a while ago, but I really enjoy reading the YA genre. It's something I don't think I'll ever grow out of and I don't think it's something I ever want to grow out of. Here is the first young adult I have read this year. It is sent to me by Ink Yard Press and this one actually is going to get published in like just three days or so. This, and this one ended up being like a really cute, very tropey story, but at the same time, I loved it. So the Elori aliens, I think that's how you pronounce it. That's the trouble with like reading. You never really know how to pronounce things. You only ever read them. But so the Elori aliens have two different uh, hierarchies of their species. So whatever host species of a planet, the Allori will kind of combine their genes with that host species. The, ho the combination, the um, half alien, half humans will kind of make the planet habit habitable, habitable first, and then true Allori's will come down after that. So in this book, we follow Morris, and he's in charge of one of the very few um, buildings left. A lot of the human population has been killed. Inside that building lives Ellie, and Ellie has a secret library, and she uses it as a way to help the human kids kind of get through these hugely traumatic events. Morris's job is to kind of keep 
the peace, and by keeping the peace, he actually is supposed to kill anyone who disrupts the peace. Ali wants to share books and she can't give up the idea of having a library. There's a secret that Morris never will tell anyone because it makes him seem very, very human. He loves music. And when he finds Ellie with her secret library, he asks her in exchange for keeping his silence to find him music. And then from there, like a very typical YA, the two of them kind of get closer and closer. No, we can't. Yes, we can. And they end up having a little bit of an adventure while they're trying to save the remaining humans. And I'm going to be honest here. I've read a lot of young adult books and I did kind of predict most of this book as I was reading it. And yet at the same time, like I really enjoyed it. I really liked the characters. I liked the slightly over the top young adult <laughs> reactions to everything. It ended up becoming a very enjoyable book. It was a lot of fun. And that's kind of like what I was looking for was for a fun book and this one delivered. The Lookalike. This is part of the Reader Insiders Club and that is through St. Martin's Press and they essentially like once every three months or so they send me a list of books and I can pick out whichever one I want to read. This one is set in Wisconsin so shout out to the Midwest. In this story we have Sienna and when she was in college, she stumbled upon a classmate who was killed. And her mother, Santa's mother, has always been very, very protective, very, very, like, almost debilitatingly afraid of something happening to Sienna. When this happens, her mother kind of goes off on a deep end and it becomes very, very difficult to deal with her. Now, 10 years later, Sienna has finally come back to her hometown and she decides that she's going to move in with her mother despite everything that has happened all of, like the bad blood between them so they're going to try and fix their relationship however the more that sienna has to spend time with her mother the more she realizes that maybe her mother doesn't have delusions maybe it might be real but then she also has like the situation where she's like well maybe i just have what my mother has so it had to like a very interesting like is it real is it not dynamic and I really liked the relationship between the mother and the daughter because I feel like so many times um, mental illness is used like I would say it's not like a, a crutch but it's very much like mental illness is oh well that person is just unhinged so that explains why that's happening in the book and this one really has a very sympathetic and empathetic viewpoint which I ended up liking quite a bit and made the story rather memorable. However, it was wrapped up just a little bit quickly for me and that ended up making it a little bit frustrating because there are some events that happened that were very like, holy crap, how are you gonna like survive that blow? And it was just kind of like, almost felt like it was a little bit swept under the rug. Stealing Thunder. Oh, and this one was sent to me by Ace Books. So one thing that like absolutely took me by surprise and how much I loved this book. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. First, I need to explain what happens. Okay, so in this book, we follow Razia. Razia is a male to female transgender woman and she lives in the Middle East. It's kind of like a fictional world, kind of based off of the real Middle East, kind of not. So she works as a hijara in a Dara house. So a hijara is a male to female transitioned woman who does entertaining and it could be anything from um, just singing and dancing to a little bit under the sheets entertaining. However, what makes her very unique is that she used to be a prince and not just any prince in the area. She was the crown prince of the entire empire. She did not want to become a king or an emperor so when she started to get towards like the teenage years so early preteens she ran away she made it to the dera where she currently is and then that was she was able to transition so what actually blew me away with this story is that the transition didn't matter so like okay so like it it did but it didn't okay so like like i've read so many books where like it's like the will they accept me will they still love me and then once they transition 
the story is over because the big thing has already happened in their lives. This one, however, the transition isn't part of the story. It's, it, okay, it happened, but it was the past. The story, it's Razia having an adventure with a really cute prince thing and living her authentic self. And there just so happens to be dragons involved. So for that, I really enjoyed the story. So like as for the actual story itself, it does take a little bit to get into because you spend a lot of time trying to catch up on the vocab terms because there's some like in a, that the author kind of makes up and the some that the author kind of like adds to the story to kind of give it like the more authentic feel. However, it did take me a little bit of paging to the glossary and to the front before I could like really know what those terms meant and that did take me a little bit out of the story. In addition, um, what also slightly took me out of the story was um, it does take a little bit to get going. And like I'm talking like about halfway through the book, things turned around really well and the story really picked up and the last 50 pages, like, oh my gosh, it was great. But it did take a little bit to get there. But that being said, I did love the way the dragons were. I mean, like, they're given a different name in this book, but like they were dragons. I love the way they were. I love that Razia could just have an adventure. Her transition is still very much part of her life and it does affect her daily life. However, it's not the sole purpose of the story is to tell the transition. And I really did enjoy that. I also really like that this is becoming more and more common. <laughs> Death in the Family by Tessa Wiegert. Ooh, Nelly. This one was literally a roller coaster for me. So this one was sent to me by Berkeley Publishing. That's my neighbor. You don't need to defend me, I'm okay, bud. We're inside a house. So this one follows Shayna Merchant and she was abducted by a serial killer a few months ago. She's finally made it out and she now she needs to kind of rebuild her life. So she's moved to a very small town and kind of with the hopes that she won't have to deal with that much in terms of like really heavy or really hard hitting police work. However, she gets called to a private island along with her partner, Tim Wellington, and they're told that someone disappeared, that there's blood all over the sheets and that they're just gone. And like, that's it. Just just cause she barks, doesn't mean you have to bug. It's a private island and it's full of these very rich, very eccentric characters. And they have to try and figure out, okay, first of all, is someone dead? Where's the body and who could have done it? And it's a very like investigative, we're talking to this person, we're talking to that person. And at the beginning, it's kind of like a roller coaster because you're just kind of going incrementally up, 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 up. And then whoo, it shot down which was insane. Once it got to like that tipping point of the roller coaster, I was so freaking hooked. Like I could not put this book down. It was so effing good. Um, one thing I really liked about this book was it was very atmospheric. It was very like crazy interesting how the private island worked, the family dynamics. I really liked that. The way they were so isolated and they were like the only hope for figuring out how this mystery happened really, really did the book wonders. The Big Finish by Brooke Fossey. So this one, like I could tell immediately from the cover, I mean like look at this cover. There's just no way I'm not going to love it. So. Duffy lives in an assisted living with his roommate, Carl. They both don't have any family left, except one day, Josie, Carl's granddaughter, breaks into the, their little apartment. And Duffy is like, instinct is always be like, no, that's not my problem. He's very grumpy, very like curmudgeon -y. <laughs> You're gonna fall off. You're slipping buddy <laughs> so he's very curmudgeon -y. he's very set in his ways he's very grumpy 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 when Josie comes in his instinct is to say like, no not my problem but there's something about the way she's asking for help and the way she needs 
somebody in her life that reminds Duffy of himself when he's younger. He decides he's going to make a difference and he's going to help her out, which involves a lot of hijinks, a lot of sneaking around in the assisted living. And it ended up being like a lot of like lighthearted fun with like definitely some serious situations coming up between them. So like I really did end up enjoying this one quite a bit. The ending did not go the way that I wanted and it did put like a little bit of like a cloud over this book. But other than that, like I really did enjoy this one. And this one's coming out in on April 14th. So put it on your radar, I would say. It's just such a lovely tale and heartwarming and uplifting, which is something that I really love in a book. The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This one was um, sent to me by Bloomsbury. And this one is actually has been published. So this one follows Cal Lewis and he does a, um, a, a new show on Flash Fame. It's pretty much like YouTube slash Twitch sort of thing. And it, he has almost a half a million followers. He's very, very popular. And he realizes very early on in this book that his dad made the astronaut program. So there's this reality TV show that follows astronauts who are going to Mars and their families and how that has impacted them. And because his father was chosen, Cal has to uproot his life from Brooklyn all the way to Houston and now he has to leave everything he's known behind. And he's not happy about this at all. So one thing that Cal mentions like quite early on is that his family is not that perfect astronaut family, which is like what the show wants to see. Instead, they're fighting, they're angry with each other. And then as he is on the show and he starts to learn what it's about, he finds out that everyone has their own secret. But what he does notice is that, whoo, there's a cute boy who is the son of another one of the astronauts, one of the female astronauts. And there's something about the boy that really gets Cal's attention. And the book is like the two of them kind of coming into their lives and going back and forth. And I thought it was really, really cute. I don't really read contemporaries very much. But that being said, like, I really enjoyed this one. Plus, oh, the cover is just gorgeous. So I like that a lot, too. <laughs> Okay, so I finished this one last night and I'm not over it and then I googled it and there's going to be a third one coming out. So like I am ecstatic and I cannot stop thinking about how much I want book number three at this very moment. So I picked up this book actually because one of my Goodreads friends, Tucker the Reader, had a very great review on the first book. So I read the first book and that was published last year. And when Berkeley reached out and said like, hey, are you interested in reviewing X amount of books, I saw this title on there and I was like, yes, give it to me. You don't have to read the first one to read the second one. It's one of those romance books where it's like each one follows a different couple. So in the first book we follow Gavin and he has been married to his wife for a couple of years now. They have twin girls and something happens which made him realize that his marriage is incredibly on the rocks and he has no idea what to do. Gavin's best friend, Dell, is a part of a secret book club. And it's all of these men, of course they're very, very hot. This group of men realize that there's a reason why all these chicks are reading these romance books. There are things in there that the chicks want in their lives. And because of that, they've decided to read these chick books, these romance books, and learn from them. So book one follows Gavin. He ends up reading a book with the book club and through that experience realizes what he's doing wrong. So in this one, we follow Liv, who is the sister-in-law from Gavin's first relationship. Liv is a sous chef at Nashville's hottest restaurant. She's working under Royce and he's a horrible, horrible boss. But she figures, you know, as long as I can just get through this, I'm golden. However, comma. She ends up witnessing Royce um, taking an advantage of a fellow worker and she confronts Royce, loses her job, and is blacklisted from everything. Meanwhile, there's Mac. Mac is actually one of the co-founders of the Bromance Book Club. He has been following the plays of romance books ever since he picked up his first. And they've 
worked. They've always worked. He's always gotten the girl. Except for he's never been able to keep the girl, and that has been a problem for him. But right now he's between relationships, and he finds out what happened to Liv, and he decides that he's going to team up with her. And they are butting heads, butting heads, in a way that you know romance books always set up the characters. And you get to watch them dance closer and closer to cl together. One thing I absolutely loved about this book is how cute the book club was. Because it's these very macho macho men and then they here they are like cracking open their romance books and like deeply analyzing what <laughs> what the characters are doing while they're doing it what's the subtext and i really love like kind of like the twist on the trope where Liv says something like oh you need a man up mac and mac goes like that's sexist and that's why fragile masculinity exists and that ended up making it like such a fun dynamic between the two characters and that ended up making it so much fun for me as a reader the end of the book the last 50 pages i literally could not put it down and i just like f it i'm gonna it's gonna be a late night it's gonna be a late night i've got to finish this book it is that good the sundown motel by simone st james Oh, this one's actually like a surprisingly a lot to unpack, but like it worked out so well and I'm so happy with it that you're just gonna have to sit here and listen to me. So this one has two different timelines. The first one happens in the 1980s and it follows Viv. And Viv um, has a, a little bit of a tough home life right now. Viv uh, drives over to Fell, New York, and she ends up having a night job at the Sundown Motel. Now, she notices right away that things seem a little bit off at the Sundown Motel. Just, it's not very popular, but there's a lot of odd noises. And then it's happening more and more frequently and she starts to wonder like, is it me? Is it, are these things really happening or is it all just me? Meanwhile, 20 years, 30 years actually, 30 years later, in 2017, we follow Carly. And Carly is the niece of Viv. So Carly's mother was Viv's sister. Carly's mother passes away and Carly is just very much distraught by grief. And she's also very upset that her family is very much dwindled. She never knew her aunt, her mother is gone. And she decides that, you know what? I'm gonna take some time off of school and I'm gonna to go to where my aunt was last seen at the Sundown Motel. So Carly goes, she finds a roommate, and she just ends up actually picking up the same shift that her aunt disappeared on all those years ago. So she's trying to figure out what happened to her aunt. At the same time, we are also learning what happened to her aunt, because like the perspectives switch back and forth. And together, like this story like worked so well. Like I don't really see it that often where like you have the two timelines, especially one where like you essentially is solving the mystery for you for the second timeline but like this worked so incredibly well and I'm like so impressed by it that I just literally oh it was good the actual story itself is so dynamic oh my gosh I was just so addicted by it I really really could not <laughs> hi bug what you doing I really could not put this one down and like I don't want to give anything away but it had like a really great like is it real is it not and like that really made the story like pop for me and made it so like I could not put this one down. Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGinnis. Ooh, this one has been like my obsession so Ashley is uh, very much has grown up as a wilderness survival girl. She has spent hours and hours like learning how to survive in the woods. For the most part, it has been kind of like just like a fun thing, a little bit of a necessary thing because her family, which is just her and her father are very poor, which makes hunting and gathering a necessity when they're trying to have enough food for the winter. So Ashley goes camping with her friends. She, dis she discovers her boyfriend in the act of cheating on her and in a drunken, rage she runs off into the middle of the woods 
collapses, falls down a ravine, etc., etc., and she's lost. She is completely lost in the woods. All she has is the clothes on her back. Her foot is extremely injured, and she has to find her way out. So it had like a very gritty hatchet slash into the wild feel to it. And there's just something about like the way it's like the setting like completely takes you into this book. Like you're just like whoosh, absorbed. So into it and I could not put it down. I was like reading on the bus. I was reading it in between classes, like everything. I was, I had to finish this one as soon as mother effing possible. Highly recommended. Plus like once this one comes out, people, the opossum scene, the, the first opossum scene, like, oh my gosh, like I physically like cringed away. Like as I was reading it, my whole body just like got smaller and smaller and my shoulders went up to my ears. Like I just could not like stop that cringe. Oh my gosh. So like when you get to this book, like, ah, <laughs> it was that good. And the best book I have read so far this year, The Night Country by Melissa Albert. Also, okay, so like this is the second book. The first book is The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This is definitely not a series where you can skip the first one and just jump to the second one. You need to get to the first one first. However, the first one is an absolutely excellent book and I loved it. I loved the scary fairy aspect. I'm a huge fan of fairy tales. I like the original Grimm Tales because they are that kind of creepy, scary element to it. So my obsession started with the Hazelwood and this has those creepy, scary fairies. This one follows Alice and she is, um, has always been on the run with her mother and she doesn't quite know why. She just knows that bad luck follows her. She has a very famous grandmother, and her grandmother published The Hinterland Tales, which is like a fairy tale storybook that is unlike anything that has been seen before or since. However, it's become a very niche, very rare book to the point where like Alice has never read it and her mother has never allowed her to. Her mother seems to very much want nothing to do with her grandmother, and it's all fine and good your pick? however one day alice comes home and her mother is missing and she realizes that the hinterland tales those were real the scary evil creatures like twice dead catherine three times alice those are all real characters and they're all coming after her so the first book is very much like trying to make it to the hinterland trying to save her mother. The second book, this one was sent to me by Flatiron Books. And this one um, has come out, it was came out early January, so like, it's already there. The second book, whoo Nelly. I don't wanna give too many spoilers away from the first book, but at this point, like, Alice made it back out of the hinterland. She's trying to like, ease herself back into real life, and she just keeps finding herself drawn back into the hinterland. Meanwhile, all, a lot of the hinterland characters came out of the hinterland and went into her world. And now somebody is murdering them. And she has to try and figure out like who is doing this and why and how she can stop it. And like one thing I absolutely love about these books is the way these creepy tales weave themselves in and out of the story. Like it is just so addictive. And every single book, we end up getting a couple of the hinterland tales from the fake book that Alice's grandmother wrote. And this one, they had a few of them and they were very, very good. And they were just so, something about them is just so addictive and so like all consuming that I cannot stop thinking about how good they are. Which by the way, I learned that there's actually going to be another book published called Tales from the Hinterland, which is going to have the fake story storybooks that these two books rely on. I cannot, I honestly literally cannot wait. I just cannot wait for the Tales from the Hinterland because I know they're going to be so freaking good. I, I just, I want that in my hands, like now. It's just so good. But this one ended up being very good. 
it had a little bit of a slow start because I think it's just because Alice is settling, trying to settle back into the real world and it doesn't have like the same vibrancy as the hinterland. However, once you get to like that halfway mark, it just took off like a shot and I was there for it and I absolutely loved it. Definitely number one I've read so far. So that's it for now. Those are my top 2020, my 2020 must reads as of now. This will change as more books are published, as more advanced readers copies are available and as I read them. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Happy reading.